So how much money can a final expense agent truly make selling final expense? So what we're going to be doing today is going over the potential of what one can make selling exclusively final expense. And I'm going to warn you, uh, we're going to go all the way, like what a top 1% agent will be able to make if they really apply themselves consistently over time and working a system like what we described. And uh, lastly, we'll also talk about the requirements in place in order to sustainably keep up the amount of activity and production to write as much business as that is possible. So the pur purpose of this video is really to give you a best case scenario for somebody who has the um, discipline of a machine uh, to get out there and make things happen and is willing to go all in. Uh, the sky is the limit, as they say, and uh, the opportunity, even if a simple product like final expense is incredible. So we're going to break it down for you and get you motivated about what is possible. My name is David DeFord. I own DeFord Insurance Group. We train agents nationally to sell final expense in person over the phone, utilizing our unique one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. Check out davidduford.com forward slash FAQ for more details. And we do these trainings live if you'd like to come to a live Zoom recording uh, as we record these, ask questions. You can go to davidduford.com forward slash ISS to sign up a free account. And you'll get access to tons and tons of scripts, free training, my free ebooks, again, for free. So go to davidduford.com forward slash ISS if interested in that. Okay, so let's talk about what is possible with final expense. This is, this is fun. And again, I'm not going to hold, any, uh, uh, hold anything back. I'm going to talk about what is, is really the potential and what I have seen in the business. Very few have done because, again, what we're going to describe here, it takes a lot of effort consistently over time. Okay. So we got to first start off with, again, a best case scenario of, of what it takes to run an appointment, how many leads it takes to run that appointment, and then from there, extrapolate what the potential is. So I'm going to use face-to-face -face in this example because I think face-to-face, -face, ironically, provides the best opportunity to write the most business. Not to say that telesales doesn't. Telesales is great for the right person. But you can have a lot more preset appointments booked that show up for their appointments much to a higher degree than I believe what we see consistently out of telesales. For face-to-face, -face, eh, three out of four to four out of five appointments should book. With telesales on a good model, it's four out of 10 to five out of 10. So let's talk about what you can run a day working a model like this. So, and I'll kind of use myself as reference point of, of, of how it was done when I was doing it. So I, were, I live in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I sold final expense before running to Ford Insurance Group full time uh, as a face to face agent. And in my peak performance days, here's how I ran my appointments. I would start at eight in the morning. And I would book appointments every 45 minutes. And I would book those appointments with an hour long arrival window. We call this the cable man booking approach. Highly recommended that you use. So you say, hey, I'll be there at 930 but please give me up to 10.30 to arrive in case I get stuck in traffic. I'll see you at 9.30, but give me up to 10.30. Does that make sense? Having that window helps a lot because what you'll find is you're going to book a ton of appointments and not all of them are going to show. But So you're in many cases actually going to be on schedule or even early with the number of appointments that you're booking. So if we book 45 minutes apart and we run all the way to the last appointment till eight o'clock, let's do the math on that. It's been a while since I've done this. So if we do, uh, let's see, 45 minutes times four is three hours, right? So that's nine. So that's eight to 11. So eight to 11, that's six. Now that's four. 11 to two is eight. Two to five is 12. And then five to eight is 16. Is that right? Somebody help me out. 15, 15 appointments, right? So I think that's realistic in the sense of you could run a little bit longer. Some people will see up to nine or 10 o'clock at night, believe it or not. But let's say eight to eight running 45 minute appointments, you should be able to do 15 appointments booked. How many of those can you do a week? Well, if you've got an appointment setter that is calling for you, preferably two, by the way, guys, one's the loneliest number of business, I would recommend uh, running 50, uh, two appointment setters if you're going to run 15 appointments a day. And you do that six days a week. Well, that's six times 15. That's 75. That's 90 appointments booked total, right? And I know this is all sounding crazy, but there have been people who have done this. Okay. I didn't say it was going to be normal. So you just got to bear with me. So 90 appointments a week. Now I never did 90. I did 15 appointments a day, but I would run three days a week and I'd get about 
35 to 40 booked and I was happy, took my 15 apps a week, about eight to 10,000 premium. And I was done with it. I was happy with that, right? So uh, 90 appointments a week. Well, how many leads do you need to get 90 appointments a week? Good question. Well, if you're working at this level of potential, then you probably need to get at least double the number of leads a week. So 90 would be 180 direct mail leads a week. Yeah, I know it's expensive, but bear with me. Uh, you'll see how it's worth it in the end. So out of those 90, uh, 180 appointments, and you, you, so you've got two callers and they're just banging out the appointments, the goal is to get about 80 to 90 appointments booked. Your inventory or total capacity is 90. You're probably going to end up about 80 or 90. Out of those 80 or 90, the expectation is to close half of those, okay? So I'll go on the low end. If I close 80 appointments, or I sit with 80 appointments, I'm probably going to close 40 applications. I may not close half of them. I might close, I don't know, 30 of the 80 appointments. And then a quarter of those would be husband-wife deals, you know, spouse-spouse deals. So I'll get two from those. So a total of 40 apps from 80 appointments. Generally, the ratio is we want to have an app for every two appointments. The average case size is going to be somewhere in the, for me, it was around 80 applications or, or $800. Uh, it was actually less for me when I was in the field, but inflation has pushed everything up. I was about 550, 600. So if I were to apply my numbers, 600 times 40 is about 24,000 in annual premium in that one week. Uh, but there are agents who do 800 to 1,000, so you could apply it commensurately. So we're talking about, again, being conservative here, uh, 600 AP, 80 appointments, uh, 600 times 80 or 600 times 40 is 24,000 AP. About 20% of that's going to fall off. So let's just pull off 5,000. So you're going to net somewhere about 19,000 in final expense business uh, in production. Now, the cost of doing business, if you look at the direct mail, say it's 50 bucks a lead, you're going to need to have approximately, oh, I don't know. It depends. Some, sometimes you can get leads less than 50 bucks, sometimes more. It could be 40 to 50. Let's just use 50. So if I buy 180 leads times 50, then what's the math on that? That's going to be 9,000 in premium, 9,000, 9,000 in cost, right? So I'm paying $9,000 to get a production of about 19,000 net. And if you're at that much production, you should be at pretty high contracts, you know, like 125, 130%. Let's say your average commission is going to be 110%. So 110% takes an account for lower commission guaranteed issue. You know, uh, you're probably going to be, what's it, 19,000, 22,000, 21,000. So you're netting about 11 to 12,000 a week. That makes sense, everybody. Big numbers, I know. Um, again, you ask me what the potential is, and this is what I'm telling you. Um, have people actually done this? Yes. Uh, there is an individual that I know that was working for another organization. Uh, he wrote in excess of 100000 in premium uh, multiple months in a row. So this guy's out there face-to-face -face selling, just like I've described, writing 100 100K plus every single month. Uh, one of my best agents who I've done multiple interviews with, Ryan Lodi, during COVID, wrote 700000 in final expense using this exact system. I don't think he was doing 80 appointments a week. I think he was doing like 65 a week. So it was a little bit lower, but he was right in line with what you would expect from a production standpoint. So this is, and the reason I'm bringing this up to you and kind of talking about this is that this is a lot of work. Most people won't do this, of course, but a lot of, a lot of the final expense business gets flack because the idea is you're selling these small little burial insurance plans to people who are low income. How can you like make money off of that? Well, you do it by massive levels of volume. You do a ton of appointments. You run a lot of, you buy a lot of leads. You run a lot of appointments. It's it's not easy. <laughs> it's simple, but it's not easy. As you can tell, it's a ton of work to do something like this. So um, you, you have to, uh, it, the potential is very high if you really have the capability to run a system like this. And there are people who have come close, if not exceeded what I've described here on a consistent basis because they've got incredible work ethic. So, of course, this is like a top 1% of 1% example. Um, what I've seen in this business as far as what's realistic, um, if you're a top 20% producer, so any sales business, including final expense, the top 20% make 80% of the revenue, right? So if you guys are going to come into final expense, you got to be a top 20% producer. Anything less, you're going to just break even, be mediocre, not do well. So you need to be concerned about what, what does it take to be in the top 20%. 
Well, it's pretty simple. You just like work the system and consistently execute. It's not any sort of magic. But the income from top 20 percenters are probably in the fifty dollars to $100,000 range, roughly. Um, the ones that are in the top 10%, maybe a hundred to 200,000 is kind of in that range. And then the 1% are in the hundreds of thousands plus, um, with their systems and how they work, <clears throat> but that's kind of what's more realistic. And yeah, they're working a lot less leads, working a lot less appointments than what I've described as again, of course, being the absolute potential. Um, but that's okay for a lot of people. And there's a lot of opportunity in that, especially on a six-figure income basis. Final expense is definitely something that can be done. So what do you need to do something as as, as even as simple as writing a six-figure income off of your production to what we described earlier, the, as, in some eyes, incalculable, uh, amazing type of system that requires so much money and effort to perform? And it's pretty simple. Number one, you need an iron will. Whether you're selling uh, 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 15 appointments a week or 80, you have to go out there and see the people consistently without relent. You have to be willing to be uh, get to get out there and work, to be consistently going out there to see people. Same rule applies whether you're selling over the phone. You have to get on that phone and put the time necessary on task to make the money that's out there. If you don't have the willpower to get going and go sell, and the discipline necessary, you're just not going to succeed no matter what amount of scale that you get to. You got to be okay getting rejected. Guys, we all get rejected in this business, especially the people who are successful. In fact, the ones making all the money in this business get rejected exponentially more than those who get rejected a few times and then quit. What's the difference? They don't let it bother them because the law of large numbers are on their side. They're seeing so many people, they're making a lot of money and they're quite happy despite getting rejected half or more of the time. So you got to be able to handle that, not take it personally. And really the only remedy for that, if you feel particularly sensitive to what people think about you, is to do so many appointments a day and so many appointments a week, a large volume of them, that you just don't have the time to care. Again, many of the problems that you will experience as agents are remedied by a lot of activity, which is kind of why I opened with this you know, big picture perspective of what's possible. And then the last thing on the list here that I can't stress this enough, to do final expense successfully, you got to have the money for leads. Again, my, my big picture, what's possible type of, of, of scenario requires a lot of money every single week to buy leads. Now, you may not have that kind of money, which is fine, but you should be able to have enough money to do 15 appointments a week, which is kind of what most full-timers end up doing is 15 completed appointments a week, whether over the phone or in person. Either way, you've got to have money to get in front of prospects in order to convert them into leads. And without money and without that capability, you're toast, right? So having that is imperative if you're going to have any sort of semblance of, of success in this business at high levels or not. So that is it. That is what's possible, as crazy as it sounds. But the point is to dispel this rumor or this idea that final expense is not lucrative is very lucrative. If you have the right system, the right training, and the right uh, marketing system in force and in place, and we can help you at the De DeFord Insurance Group to do that. If you'd like to learn more, go to daviddeford.com forward slash FAQ. We do ask agents to apply and interview with us. Uh, we're not for everybody. So if you check that FAQ link, you'll see more about what we do and see if what we do is a good fit. Thank you for watching.